Hey yo bozos, Major League Butt Kicking is back in town. My name is Nick. And I'm Sarah. And I'm Manuel. And this is a run-in for Tuesday, June 5th, 2018. We have had a busy couple of days. And Just us, Mitch. Personally, here we've had a busy day or two. <laughs> uh, Manuel, how have you been in the time that we've been gone? Uh, extremely busy. Definitely extremely busy. Uh, a few things happened over the weekend, um, and, and I'll get into that because we have talked about the paranormal before, and I'd like to touch on that later. Hoi? Oh, you want to talk about that later? Yeah, I mean, or we can talk about it now. I mean, I know your house is haunted AF. So that <laughs> actually should come to an end. I actually buckled down and went ahead and uh, blessed the house. I've got some, I forget what he said it was called, but it was a type of oil. Mm-hmm. And uh, I kind of put it all around the house and prayed over. I didn't mean to give you that. <laughs> what is this? Aura mist? Yeah. What is what is this? I mean, it's for your aura, but I guess you can use it for your the aura of your house. Get it? Aura? <laughs> Wink? That means, like, take the shirt off. Woo! Aura everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, but this is purification. And should not go on the body, right? I, well, I do it. I mean, keep it away smells from the, good. Keep oh, away from can. the eyes. Here, you want to smell it? I'd imagine. Yeah. It smells super good. I spray it around here from time to time. Hey, that does smell good. Yeah. So okay. if you want to, if you want to borrow it. <laughs> but this aura, aura mist that you're presenting to me is was is this to fight off any uh, paranormal activities <laughs> or, or is literally any just, negative energy? Any negative energy, and yeah. it says it's sandalwood and lavender, yeah. a purifying mist to remove negativity. Relief stress and restore balance. Don't take while in the restroom. Okay. So is this supposed to get rid of the <laughs> sass that goes between me and you all the nope. time? No, because okay, because if that this was sass its purpose, is permanent. Okay, because I was like, if this is what it's intended for, you need to get your money back. <laughs> so, I, think the, I think since you introduced that into this place, that the sass has gone up tenfold. Wow. So you're saying you keep a little spray bottle with you at all times, and as soon as she starts to <laughs> sass you, when we introduce the water spray bottle to Sally when she's being bad, wherever she is, he's she's gonna eat- do he's gonna do that on me too. <laughs> she she's eating her food, Good. being a cute little kitty. Good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So obviously we have a cat named Sally. She's adorable. She's the greatest. She goes over to the doors that go out into the balcony, and if the the blinds are flat and open. She will go and nuzzle against them, and then she'll start nibbling. And there's actually a corner where she's nibbled, and we're like, stop it. Earlier today, we were watching TV, and I was like, hey, quit. Quit. And I started waving my arm. It's now a daily occurrence to get our attention to put her outside. (laughs) I was waving my arm like a madman, and I was like, stop it. Stop it. (laughs) She just looks at me. And then does again. (laughs) Sees that I'm not going to get up, and then's like, nuzzle, nuzzle. (laughs) Right back to it. (laughs) You need the the spray for Sally. What a brat. (laughs) I need to get the tiny spray bottle and be like... That's all I'm going to see you now is, is every time something gets out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told her at my old place, uh, we had a couple of other, we had a couple of other cats and for whatever reason, they were fascinated with being in my room and I'd always be like, no, get out of here. And I guess it's because they're not allowed. They want in more and they would always run in. I'd pick them up, throw them out. I turn around. I hear thump, 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 jump on my bed. And I'm like, oh, you little shits. Eventually I got a water bottle and... <laughs> I could show that water bottle to Sally, and she'd run away. Hmm. One of the other ones was a coward, and I'd spray him in the face, and he'd run away. But then one of them was just really dumb, and he didn't get it. I'd spray him. Even though. I'd spray him, and he'd be like, what the hell? And then he'd start licking his, like. He's like, ooh, agua. (laughs) And then I'd spray him, like, psst, psst, get out of here, psst. And he'd be like, now I'm wet. (laughs) <laughs> he would just stand there like an idiot. I'm like, oh, you're so dumb. Wow. But he was a sweetheart. <laughs> or he is a sweetheart. He's just he's just dumb. <laughs> but he is he is ob- he is one of the most lovable cats. And he talks. I love cats that talk to you. Where you're just like, hey, what are you doing? And he goes, <laughs> really? <laughs> Well, Sally talks, talks back. She talks back. She this did. cat, the, uh, the, you know, Frankie, the other cat, he would talk to you like, oh, yeah, I'm holding a conversation. Sally back talks. Yeah, she, <laughs> I, I just witnessed you trying to put her in from the outside, which she wasn't outside, but as soon as you were going to close the door, <laughs> she wanted to go outside. And then you said, come on, it's time to come inside. And you hear, <laughs> you know, come on. Like, almost begging, like, please, please, just five more minutes. Five more minutes. You went to touch her, and she got louder, like, high, high, the higher note. Yes. She acts, she's very dramatic, and she... This is our teenage daughter right here, guys. She squeals like, I'm about to hit her. Right. Like, and I'm like, like, you just, were, like, you hit her, but you, you just got close to her. And I was like, 
nudging her, like barely brushing her, like, I want you to go in this general direction. And she's like, that's just, crazy to me. <laughs> that is crazy. I don't, I've yeah. never witnessed that. And it's funny because she's always been like that. She's always just been like the drama queen. She's amazing. Yes. Oh, okay, Sal- uh, Sally. Sarah. He'll do that now from time to time. Sarah and Sally That's okay. Are, I'm, what is it the other day? I told him any other name will have a problem. The other day, I had she she was being sassy to me, and I was being a smart ass, and I was like, I'll show you something, something, and I called her Sally, and I go, shit, Sarah. <laughs> That, but see, that's very, it's a very similar S A, you know. That's name, okay. So, I'm yeah. not upset. Yeah, that's, <laughs> now, if we didn't have a Sally, I'd be like, "What? Like who's Sally?" And I'm like, um, "Well, that's up." Yeah. <laughs> He's like, "Okay, I'm being haunted by a female ghost." Oh named, come named on! Sally. <laughs> you ever seen Ghostbusters? Remember when Dan Aykroyd's laying in bed and the ghost undoes his pants? It's kind of like that. I totally forgot about. You forgot that. about that? All yeah. About that movie's that. geared towards kids. And what does Dan Aykroyd do? He's his eyes roll in the back of his head. Mm-hmm. And he's having the time of his life. I can't believe that movie's geared towards kids. I think wow. there's a lot of a lot of things happening. I yeah. mean, if his eyes went to the back of It was head. a different time. Yeah. How appropriate they, they would bring up a succubus. <laughs> oh, is that what that's supposed to be? Yeah. Oh, that's okay. a female ghost seducing a man. Nice. Incubus is a male ghost seducing a woman. Incubus is a band? <laughs> a band. Let's get it straight. Yes, that, that's true. That's actually what I thought <laughs> about. Incubus, I was like, okay, uh-huh. Is that Puddle Lamont? Or no, uh, no, Blurry. What is that? <laughs> what was their one song that was really popular? Incubus... Blurry. I, I see, Sarah. Did you listen to Incubus? I did, I did but I can't think of their hit song. At the time, I was a poser and I was listening to hip hop, so I didn't listen to Incubus. Wow. Incubus. <laughs> At least you admit mud. it. Yeah. I think it's Incubus Puddle of Mud, if not Blurry. I think it's Blurry. For those blurry of you listening. Saying, uh, blurry was sung by Puddle of Mud. Puddle of Mud. So I was saying t- <laughs> the artist and their song for Incubus. Yeah. So then I'm thinking, so then Incubus was, well, what was their song? I don't know. I do know for sure they had a song on one of the early Now albums. Now that's what I call music. Yeah. But I couldn't tell you what it was. I didn't listen to Incubus. I just knew of them. No, just one song. And my cousins liked them. I didn't listen either, but the, there was I one I wish you were song. here. No, that's not it. It's, yeah. No, I it's not that one. I wish you Keep, were here. Name other ones. Like um, popular because there was one that was very popular. Wish you were here was not it. No, no, that's wish you. It would was step to away me. from that ledge, my friend. No, mind. that's not it. <laughs> but that's the song that I got when I'm thinking of that. Uh, wish you were here. Warning. That was a popular song too. Mm-hmm. Talk shows on mute. I don't know that one. That Stellar, sounds familiar. Nice to know you. And that, um, maybe it was. Wish as soon you as you hear were "Wish here. You Were Here," you'll know it. Maybe, yeah, maybe that. I promise. Step back from that ledge, my friend. That's not them. <laughs> Stop <too>. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we did have a crazy thing that happened. Now it's yesterday afternoon. Yes. Um, Sarah, you were here for that when I was. When I was went all out. alone with Sally. I was at work, so of I course. went out. <laughs> but tell us what happened. Some kid below us decided to shoot a gun. <laughs> Okay, back up, <laughs> because we went over what happened with Nick, what happened with me, and you're saying some kid blew a gun? Yeah, so what is my floorboard would be their ceiling, so the kid somehow shot a gun up to the ceiling through my floor and <laughs> made a wonderful hole in my floor. <laughs> with a cloud of smoke. <clears throat> with a cloud of smoke, yes. Hold on, so you... Someone discharged a weapon and it went through the ceiling of what there would be their ceiling and your floor? Yeah, so that's their ceiling, which is sheetrock, and then plywood, and then the carpet. <laughs> what did you hear? Was it loud? It was a loud bang. And Because she was in the kitchen and she's like, what's that sound? And she looks over the, the wall of the kitchen little island or whatever this is. The bar. And, yeah, the bar. And she sees like a cloud of white smoke and she's like, What? I was I was curious of what just exploded because it's what it sounded like. So it must so, have been it was loud enough that you thought it was an explosion. Yeah, a very a very small one. So I go over there and I try to investigate and I see I have a hole in my floor. So through various phone calls, because I'm calling like mom, dad, and Niskis, <laughs> and Niskis <laughs> is the one that said you should call the property manager. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> well, well, hold on. So I, you weren't scared, like? Um, no, I was being completely naive, and I was like. I don't know what just happened. I thought maybe something in one of the boxes I had that maybe got too hot and blew up, or my, I legit thought it was oh, my tennis ball. The last thing you would have thought it was a bullet. Yes, because I genuinely don't know what it sounds like besides hearing it outside when my dad and my brothers used to shoot guns on my granddaddy's 
land. How did you feel after you found out it was a bullet? I was hysterical. I legit started crying. So what happened, I called the property manager. She came over right away. And she warned me about a couple of things. As soon as she came in through the door, she was being very serious. And usually her and I are very chipper with one another. Yeah. So I show her it, and she leaves the exact same way. But she seems a little more subtly terrified. And then she said, there is, like, a curiosity that a gun was stolen over the weekend. So, okay, so she knows that there's probably some suspicious activity. Yeah, but that was actually a completely different situation. So as soon as she told me that, I just started crying. So I was like, okay, I need to, like, call my dad because my dad is a police officer. Yeah. And he was over here, like, in a couple minutes, and he called the police for me because I apparently don't know what to do in a crisis. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, that that would have thrown me off for sure. So I'm glad he did that. And I called mom. She's, like, ready to get me out of here. (laughs) I bet. Then I called Niskis and I told him, I was like, it was a gun. And he's like, what? <laughs> and so <laughs> the apartments we live in are the nicest in town. Sarah, you, you're, that's an understatement. That, this, <laughs> they're not the, just the nicest. Like, they're really nice. And I think somebody told me one time that these apartments go for like a lot of money. And so then I myself have never even came and asked because I knew I was like, I can't afford those. I'm not even going to get close to that. So... A gun discharging, I mean, that's just something you put in a movie or in a cartoon. Like, I can't imagine that actually happening. It sounds fake. Yeah. I'm taking over Emar's spot right now. So how many lives do you think you have left? I at least have eight. Woo! (laughs) Well, no, I should count, like, my childish antics and car wrecks I've been in. So maybe seven. (laughs) And then minus another one because of Mighty Mouse? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mighty Mouse gave me a heart attack, so six. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) I'm starting to lose lives here. I need hearts. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's yeah. So it was not a malicious intent. Unfortunately, it was a kid, but he was old enough to know better. Just being made mistakes. Being stupid. And unfortunately, the tenant downstairs didn't know that it was in her apartment. So he just found it. And goodness, I can only imagine what kind of drama that started down there. But um, we were told it was taken care of. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> I'm just thinking, like, what if you were in bed or like what if this would have been at night and y'all heard an explosion that's that would ruin your sleep yeah so i mean in this instance it was right next to the couch so goodness forbid if i'm like fiddling because i still have stuff over there next to the couch what if i'm sitting there fiddling with whatever's in my storage box and i get i get shot at (laughs) yeah if she would have been kneeling down like clearing out this box right here she would have literally been sitting on her butt inches from where the explosion would have occurred because we have this little end table next to the couch. So the bullet came up through the carpet, dust went everywhere. The bullet hit the bottom of this little table and then ricocheted, ricocheted somewhere over here uh, by this other wall. Like two parts of the bullet shards were separate from one another. So the copper one was next to the bin and then he was cleaning up and vacuuming and he found the other one by Sally's litter box. Now imagine if she would have just been relaxing on the couch, head this direction, her head would have been inches away from, yeah. you know, if that table hadn't been there, the bullet would have gone straight through and up. Yeah, that's exactly what dad said. He said it would have gone straight through to my ceiling. Yeah. And this is pretty high ceilings, too, and you're a tall guy, too. Now you'd have a <laughs> hole on your ground and in your ceiling. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we've been dealing with. It, it comes to show that whenever, if it's your time to go, it's your time to go. Like, <laughs> right? that's a freak accident. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. It wasn't that's exactly what I thought. It's not attentive murder because I don't think they even know you, right? So, no. Uh, and again, this is one of the nicest apartments like I've ever been to, especially the, the nicest one here in town. So, yeah, if it's your turn, it's your turn. It'll. Can you sense. imagine, like, if I had been home and, like, it would have struck me from the underside and I would be like, Whoa, my God, I go down and then you're supposed to come over to record and she calls you and she's like, Oh my God, Niskis just got shot in the apartment. Niskis is down. (laughs) It's like, wait, Nick got shot at home while in the apartment. And then she's like from underneath. What? Yeah, I would have not... I, I wouldn't have been coherent, because poor mom. I yeah, called her, because after I called dad, and he took care of it, I called mom, and I'm hiding in the bathroom, because he tells me, go get in a corner somewhere, and I'll be right there. I'm thinking, okay, I don't know what, what a corner's going to do for me, because it obviously just happened in the middle of the fucking floor. It could have been anywhere, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, I can't go hide in my bedroom, because I thought I heard, I heard two bangs. So the first one, there's 
obvious evidence. And then the second one, I had no idea where it was. So it sounded from over there. So I'm like, I can't go in my bedroom. I can't go in the closet. So I'm like, I'll just go sit on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm calling mom and I'm hysterical. And she's like, Sarah, tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm just crying. So I wouldn't have been able to tell you anything. <laughs> yeah. So if Sarah ever calls you in a, in a hysteric panic and is just bawling. Just rush over here. Just get to <laughs> Sarah. Get <laughs> to Sarah. Get over here. Assume that Nick is dead. Yeah, and get to or her about to die. Oh, so to please hurry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then Bocho comes, and then like here I come from the store, and where he's like, "You're not dead." I'm like, "What? No, obviously not. I'm right here." She's we like, "Oh, must be Mighty Mouse." <laughs> <laughs> or like we come in here, and like the dishwasher's leaking, <laughs> and you're just in a panic. Oh my! It's God. like I do not need this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, that I mean, is that really outside the realm of possibility? If the dishwasher just suddenly started to leak while I was away at the store? No, I call you in a rant. Oh, like okay. you better deal with me bitching, because yes. like, I am not dealing come, with this. I come back with a big <laughs> bottle of vodka. I'd be like, "Tell me all about it." There is nothing outside the realm of possibility now. <laughs> yeah. Not after this. Oh my god. Ta- speaking about things being out of the realm of possibility, did you guys hear about Snoop Dogg breaking the Guinness World Record for the giant with a giant gin and juice? No. The world's largest gin and juice. <laughs> at the of time course. at the time of this recording, this past weekend, um, Snoop Dogg took the stage at a California Bottle Rock Napa Valley Festival and mixed a record-breaking 132-gallon cocktail. Setting the record with Snoop uh, were Warren G. and Top Chef winner Michael Voltaggio, and was confirmed by Guinness World Records. Mixed in the glass measuring 5 feet high and 3 feet wide, it contained 180 bottles of Hendrix gin and a massive load of juice donated for the attempt by Wholesales. Uh, Snoop Dogg performed as the headliner for the event. And I saw a picture of it. The son bitch <laughs> Like, you know, Snoop's a tall guy. Yeah. And he's standing there and he's grabbing like this giant straw and there's this giant mug looking thing. It looked like a giant beer mug. And it was like, like to hear his breast. And Snoop Dogg was like, look at this. If it is reaching almost to Snoop Dogg's like shoulder slash breast, mm-hmm. it's tall because he is tall. He is a tall dude. The picture was from behind. He was like pointing at the, all the mass of people that were there. And... You know, when, when people make things that, that are novelty size that are edible, when it gets to a certain point, it almost looks disgusting. <laughs> Whatever this was, this gin and juice, it actually looked kind of gross. I think it would have so gone much. up to your chin, actually. Probably. Because you're, you're what, 5'8", five, 5'10"? Five, I am like 6'2". Ew, in this case. <laughs> so it was like a cup, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a novelty thing. Like... Oh, God, what is something that is large? Like, if I saw a giant donut, I'm, I'd be thinking, wow, that's amazing. But then once a donut gets to a certain size, I'm like, okay, that's kind of gross. Because that's too much donut. No. But, for you know, a slice of pizza? Mm-mm. Holy. Give me that all day. Ew. What? What? Like in Austin, where they have that, like, the giant pizza? Like that? Is that what you mean? Oh, yeah. How about all over the state of Texas? You have, like, the largest bowl of chili, the largest hamburger, the largest hot dog. Where do you go for the largest chicken fried steak? Is that in Austin, too? I remember seeing a place where the, the some bitch is like... That has to be West Texas. It's like somewhere. as big it's as... like a this, large pizza. It's like this laptop opened up it's flat. It's huge. And it's like, that's the steak. It's served on a cookie tray. And Dang. then you get a separate cookie tray of like fries and mashed potatoes. Ew. But like the steak itself is on a giant cookie tray. Wow. <laughs> okay. And it's only fourteen ninety nine. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and prices you can't beat. <laughs> only here in Texas. Mm-hmm. Everything's pretty Have you guys ever drank gin and juice? No. I have not. I think I'd be willing to try it. Is gin and juice considered a ladies' drink? Uh, no, because I think I think Snoop has rapped about it before. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I say that, I know he has. I don't know why I say I think he yeah. has. So no, I don't think it's a it's a lady drink. What's a lady drink? Something that fruity. tastes fruity. Something that doesn't smell bad. Something that it's really sweet. Something that would not strip paint off a of wall. <laughs> so the good stuff. The good shit. Yeah. The stuff that'll creep up on you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and not gasoline. Yeah. Like, if you could pour it into, like, a weed eater and it'll start, mm-hmm. I don't want to drink that. Okay. Well, because uh, I, I, smelled, I smelled beer the other day, and uh, I was near it, and I smelled it, and I was like, I, I just don't understand how that could possibly taste good. It doesn't. So, I mean, why do people just drink it? Yeah, and it's the smell alone. I remember back uh, when I was a lot younger, I used to drink beer. Mm-hmm. But in order to get to that point, and I knew then I wasn't going to like it. 
To get to that point, I had to numb my tongue by drinking Smirnoffs or Bacardi's. And I would drink like two of those and it would numb my mouth and then I could drink beer and yeah. be totally good. Well, I've asked these questions before, but no, uh, other people don't numb their mouth before they drink beer. They just well, that was the only way I could get past the awful taste. How you could, right? Yeah, but because if I just tried straight, I was going to vomit. Because I was like, this smells like what horse piss would probably taste like. So, I mean, it's that's what it's it smells like. It smells disgusting. But, of course, somebody else listening to this podcast yeah. might be like... And it's an acquired taste, bro. <laughs> and, and then you gotta be a how gotta many, be a real man. How many Steve Weisers that Stone Cold knock back? What? Yeah, without <laughs> numbing his mouth first. <laughs> you don't got what it takes, bro. Sarah, did you ever drink uh, knock back a couple beers, brewskis? I tried Bud Light Lime. Oh, how was that? Ugh. Oh, okay. It's still ugh. Like the artificial lime it's, is not there. It still tastes like piss. It's still Bud Light. It's still Bud Light. <laughs> Bud Light, yes. Yeah. Uh, were you on the? You, did you see on the chat thread? Where I sent that thing to Jimmy about that London beer that was like 67% alcohol. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah. like the world's strongest beer. Yep. And Jimmy was like... It's stronger than whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy goes, challenge accepted. Where do I get it? <laughs> I didn't even see him say that, did he? Yeah, really? he was like, I want some. And then me and Sarah looked of online course. and we found it for, was it 40 bucks? It was $38. Yeah. And that was with... It was like 50 something with but it had like that weird squiggly thing for the currency. Yeah. So when you do it the was in pounds. Yeah, oh. so when you do the exchange, it's like forty bucks American. Okay. And it was shipping in from London. Did you buy it? No. That's oh. why I was like we should all chip in like, you know, five bucks. You bucks. said that on the thread? Yeah. When when did you say this? Uh, was it late last night? It was yesterday. Yeah. It was late. <clears throat> I was doing this. I was doing this puzzle. I saw the picture of the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy was like, Where do I get it? And I was like, Yeah, I get it from London. And if we all chipped in, we can get Jimmy trashed. Well, he like, said challenge accepted. I'm, I'm down trashed. to see something like that. Especially. I'm down to see Jimmy. Because I've, I've never seen Jimmy trashed. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it's legendary. Anybody trashed that has the <laughs> ideology that Jimmy has, uh, <laughs> it's fun to watch. Do you think if Jimmy got trashed, he would get naked again? Not, No. Well, I don't think he needs to get be, drunk to get naked. Trash? <laughs> no, no, I think so. This, because, you know, we used to all do things when we were younger, and now we're, like, all entering. I think we're all in our 30s now, right? We've all crossed yeah. that line. Yeah, just like, crossed it, yeah. You'd be like, where's the old Jimmy? He was fun. He would get naked just like that. I don't think he'd get naked now. You'd have to. He'd have to get trashed. <laughs> and he'd be like, is this a six-pack? And I'm like, pretty sure it's only for six. 40 bucks, you get six of them. Yeah. No, I think it's one big bottle, actually. Shut up. Really? I legit think it is, yeah. It should be. It should be that I think way. it's just it's one like big bottle. Challenge. I mean, I figured, oh, 40 bucks is shipping from London. It's a six glass bottles of beer, unless it's plastic. I mean, whatever. I don't know how you ship a beer. Yeah. No, it looks like one big bottle. Good Lord. Then the bo- big bottle of beer would be however many ounces, what, that is? That's 62. Dude, there's no way they'd sell a beer that big, right? It's right. London. It's, they it's, drink, man. And, <laughs> and it costs a lot of money. It should. Yeah. Well, okay. You know what, Manuel? I really want to party with you. I don't drink, so mm-hmm. we can party. You can drink, but don't, Since don't. we don't drink, he wants to see us drunk. I do. I want to see how red her face will get. Hi. Her cheeks will just get... Whoosh. Have you ever been drunk? No. Well, yeah. Then uh, we don't need... You're looking at, like... What if she gets, like, super angry? Right. Then that's what like, I'm saying. Like, what if we're angry drunks? What if we're obnoxious drunks? What or... if you end up talking with an accent out of nowhere? I'm <laughs> well, like, then there goes my code. Or my cover. <laughs> I'm like, Sarah, what are you doing? She goes, hello, governor. <laughs> she just talks like... <laughs> oh, my Sarah, that would be legendary. If it's funny. I say oi already. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can kind of see Sarah with a beer and say, "Oi!" <laughs> yelling. Not the one. Oi, mate. <laughs> it was like Sarah. Half hour ago, you had a Scottish accent. Now this one is what from Arizona. What it's is like, this? I'm Arizona. drunk. <laughs> I can be anything I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Even a a fireman. <laughs> Sarah, I don't think you can... I don't think you can be a fireman. What is it? You sexist pig? No, you're physically, like, too small. I don't think you could lift the hose. (laughs) That is sexist. Sexy. (laughs) You're falling asleep. She fell asleep. (laughs) Sitting up, I'm impressed. (laughs) Sitting up. She's just like, he's like, wait, why are her eyes still open? And she's just... Oh my god, those are so creepy. (laughs) 
People that do that creep me out. It's like, yeah, you just gotta, you gotta shut them for me. <laughs> I just go, and I reach over to touch her, and she goes, wow, why are you gonna touch me? And I'm like, ah! <laughs> oh my god. Because she sees it, she sees it coming. Yeah. I mean, she's sleeping, but she sees it coming. That's so creepy. <laughs> That's okay. a comedy. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go online, and I'm gonna find uh, how to learn, or teach yourself how to sleep with your eyes open, just to fuck with you. Wow. Yep. It'll be great. But you know what wasn't great? Uh, the family realizing that their pet dog was actually a bear. <laughs> You're I, really trying to get better at segways. <laughs> yeah, at one point I was really good at them. <laughs> I actually I, I heard about that. So tell me again, how did they not notice? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this happened in China. I don't know if how relevant uh, that is. That's just where it happened. It almost seems like a, like a folklore. Yeah, bear, okay, almost. yeah. How do you realize that your pet dog is not a bear? Like, there is a reason why they say they're book smart. <laughs> right, because like you know what a dog acts like, especially a puppy. So yeah. then, was it acting like a puppy when I, it was a cub? I, I don't know. Uh, according to the Independent, two years ago, Su Yun, uh, she bought a puppy on vacation, believing to be a Tibetan uh, mastiff. From day one, Yun and her family were impressed by the pet's massive appetite, as it reportedly chowed down on a box of fruit and two buckets of noodles each day. It wasn't until the animal reached 250 pounds and started walking around on its hind legs that they realized that there was a problem. The dog was actually an Asiatic black bear. Since the realization the family has had the bear transferred to the Yunnan Wildlife Rescue Center, will it will receive proper care from wildlife professionals. Wow. So all I heard was this family has a lot of money because that's more food than I think a lot of, like there's people starving. Yeah. And so, first of all, they have a lot of money, so maybe they're just spoiled, and that's why they were so... Well, aren't noodles relatively cheap? Man, stop with your logic. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, could, I could probably fill a couple buckets of ramen, you know, fairly easily if a brick is only, like, what, 30 cents, 40 cents? I guess. Now yeah, you just but need if to you get switch that, that to pounds and then switch it to yen, what's Chinese money? But they didn't even specify how big the buckets of noodles were. I picture big buckets. <laughs> Like, like the type of wash the can... car with these buckets. <laughs> so you get a box of fruit and then uh, two buckets of noodles each day. Wow! Can you imagine this, each day. This son of a bitch reached two hundred fifty pounds before they were like, uh, "You're not a dog, are you?" <laughs> no, it had to stand up and walk around on its hind legs Mm-mm. when they were relaying. Uh, I don't think this is a dog. This might be a bear. <laughs> to be fair, a mastiff is a big dog. It is. But oh, okay. any puppy starts the same size. <laughs> Very small. Yes. Even a bear cub is not small. <laughs> yeah, a bear cub is like the size of It probably of a... goes up to my knee. <laughs> yeah, a bear cub is... Uh... I mean, they're little, but they don't stay little very long. A bear cub is what, the size of a golden retriever full grown? Something like that? Not not that big, but yeah. It's big, large, yeah. Big. Bigger than... Uh... Bigger than Sally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if you... If your fucking dog... If my dog turned covered into it. a bear? <laughs> well, if you had this, like, really big, really, very furry dog that you couldn't really see its defining features because it's just covered in fur, and then all of a sudden it just rears up and you're just like, Oi, are you challenging me? You say, Oi, to the bear. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how it would react. If I really was dumb, like, dumbfounded that my dog is now on his hind, he, I mean, his hind legs and I'm like... You don't seem tired at all. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, okay, because bears have that face, right? Yeah. Like their snout starts to whatever, and I, I don't know what dog would have that type of face that a bear would have, and especially the claws. Don't bears have, like, these gigantic four talons that grow but instead of... But it is a mastiff, so it is, it is different because okay. it's bigger. So, yeah. I, I'm not, I can't compare it to, like, a golden retriever, like you said, or, I yeah. or like, a lab or something like that. So, uh, to me, the, the biggest tell would be, I've never heard this mother bark. <laughs> <laughs> like, even if it's a calm dog, even if it's a good puppy, sometimes they bark. They bark never even, bit. that never crossed my mind. Yeah, I'd be like, <laughs> you growl a lot, bitch. I've never heard you bark. <laughs> That's amazing, though. Like, I, you know, this Asiatic black bear never even considered eating a baby. Right. We, or, <laughs> or, or, you know, like... It's a wild animal. It, it is. That some was domesticated. Bitch, some bitch, you don't bark. Hey, you don't bark. And when you get mad, you growl. <laughs> <laughs> Albeit roar. Oh, Hi. my goodness. Sarah? Huh? Um, would you like a bear cub? No. 
No? Okay. You better give me, like, a, a tiger first. I want oh. a tiger cub. A, a baby tiger? Yes. Yeah. But then or a snow-cladded leopard. I've always loved them. I could get you a barracuda. Yeah. A, big, a big barracuda. <laughs> I need to take that pause. A big barracuda. Yeah. <laughs> Again, on, people, that's a fish. <laughs> come on, say it'll be fun. A barracuda. <laughs> no. I can't believe no. it. I was a grown adult when I realized that was a fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, way, the way Zach is, I think... <laughs> would be so funny if I if I would have heard him say that like hey why do you keep doing that noise <laughs> the, the pauses that he makes you know why do you keep growling every time you say barracuda I'm like oh because you know that's what it is like no <laughs> what do you think a barracuda is an exotic cat like a Bengal tiger or a panther no it's a fish mountain lion what wow <laughs> I like a mountain so lion. not a mountain lion not at all no that is a big blonde moment for Niscus show me a picture shut up this ain't real. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so we checked out trailers again. We got five more on doc. Mm -hmm. The first one is pronounced, is it Papillon? Papillon? I think it's Papillon. Okay, because they never said, I don't think. And he was just scrawling it on the wall. How would you say it? Papillon. Papillon. Okay, so this movie is going to star Charlie Hunnam. What was that? A, the Malik? Rami Malik. Rami Malik. Is it Malik or Malik? However, tomato, tomato. Is it Undertaker okay. or Undertaker? <laughs> there's, there's two of those. <laughs> One is not making money, and the other one is a soon-to-be WWE Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. Uh, this movie, look, it stars Charlie Hunnam, and it looks like he's framed for murder because he's with a woman, and then cops barge in, and they're like, hey, you're arrested for the murder of what's, his, of what's her name, and he goes, but I've been with her. Well, it doesn't matter. He gets sent to basically Alcatraz or whatever prison this is. He's told there. Nazi, he's in Paris. In the Nazi camps. Yeah, he's like, you cannot escape. And if you do, two years in solitude. If you try again, we're sending you to, like, Death Island or something like that. And it looks like him and his Malik buddy are going to try to escape. Right? Mm hmm So, what do you guys think of this movie? I want to see it. It seemed interesting. And yeah. there were a lot of shots where Malik was looking into Charlie's eyes a lot. And yeah. I almost won't. Like they were gonna, lovers? Like, I almost thought they were going to fall in love at the end. And, like, if that would have happened... I, it would have made sense. I wouldn't have been like, well, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> it happens. Do You're you around men for a long time in jail? Yeah, it happens. That, yeah. That's why I would, like, that, would, okay. that would have been... I wouldn't have been surprised. I mean, Charlie Hunnam is a good-looking guy. Malik is, too. Like, they're, they're both... really big jaw, though. I love it. <laughs> jaw for days. Goodness. <laughs> Whoa. Where's that spray bottle? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need to get the Hey, small... you have your picks. Hey, Taylor Swift is an angel. Ugh. Straight from heaven. Huh. <laughs> okay, do you guys what's feel... Your what's your favorite song from Taylor Swift's album? Just a side note, real quick. Uh, I really like the song Style. From her new album. Oh, from her new album? I don't know the names. I don't really like this album. Mm. So, if she came, so if she came to concert, which she will, I'm sure yeah. a stadium of some sort, You would you still go right now? If you know, Even if I could just get like cheap seats, I think I'd go. So that that's what I'm seeing on her Instagram. I'm seeing a lot of pictures of her. You know, she's on the stadium tour right now. And I'm like, I feel like, not that she fell off, but I don't feel like this album was that popular. No, because it's completely out of her realm. It's not Taylor Swift. Yeah. No. What you're saying. This is like the first album that I don't feel this is. This is her trying to be like all the other women that are singing like these weird, whatever type of music that this is. Because who? Like who? I, I don't, I don't like, think she's even that. Or oh, I want to know who you're thinking of. Well, she went from country to, like, whatever pop was, whatever, like, 1989 was, and this one is, like, I don't know, like, the these weird um, beatbox type of songs, whatever they are. Like, I think there's only one song that I halfway like, and I don't even know the name of it. Delicate. I don't know how that sounds. I, I mean, it probably is, but I don't know. I'd have to hear it. But, dude, those Instagram videos, looking good. Get it, Taylor. So you would go to this one just out of respect slash attractiveness, but not because of the music. I would go out. for her other hits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you guys feel that Charlie Hunnam is the type of actor that needs just that one role to be that true breakout leading guy? <clears throat> because I really thought that Pacific Rim was going to be that role for him, and it didn't work. No, I think um, King Arthur? Yeah, that came after, and I thought, okay, maybe this <laughs> is the one where... This is going to be the movie that's going to make him a true leading man. Because that's what he was in Sons of Anarchy. 
And uh, there were times when I thought, this guy needs to make movies. He's going to be too big for TV at some point. And yet he goes and makes movies and it just doesn't feel like you could build like a franchise around him. But I thought it was going to be Pacific Rim. And then he wasn't in the sequel. I liked him in Crimson Peak. See, I didn't see Crimson Peak. It's, I haven't seen that. It's all right. He played like the Dr. Love Interest. This Charlie guy, does he kind of look like somebody else that used to be an actor and then died? I don't want to... Heath Ledger? Yes! Oh. No, he doesn't okay, look like no. no, no, no. <laughs> okay, but how did you know what I was thinking? <laughs> because I was I confused. Did not because he's like the that. only blonde actor who died that I could think of. But I didn't even that say has... blonde. <laughs> oh, so shit. that he does. Well, Charlie Hunnam is blonde. Okay, but I didn't say that. I just said this. He looked like an actor who was once alive, is all I said. And you got it. Wow, I could see it now. I had to think of them, you know, but yeah, I could see it. He's no, in... there's another actor that looks just... He was in the Batman movies he looks just like Heath Ledger to me so I thought that was kind of like a slap a little bit because um god I think he's a police officer in the movie in the like old movies the no older... like the newer Batman movies the one with Ben Affleck yeah I think really there was somebody in that movie that looked like Heath Ledger to me and he was like a Is police officer Joseph okay. Levitt yeah yeah Joseph Gordon-Levitt he looks so, like Heath Ledger to me he does he he, he does he does I but I know him. Joseph Gordon-Levitt so yeah. I, like I don't I'm Charlie, I'm not very familiar with, but I mean, either you've discussed this with somebody, or you've, seen, or you've heard it come up before that he looks like. No, he... I just, I just took a guess. That's crazy. Then <laughs> subconsciously, you agree with me. And for those of you who know both people, I'm sure you either agree to or never thought about it before. Charlie Hunnam is a more jacked up version of Heath Ledger. Yeah. Well, he and a little bit younger. Well, of course, yeah. but I, we knew Heath when he was younger. Well, I mean, I didn't really pay much attention to him when he was younger. Ten Things, was it Ten Things I Hate About You? I didn't really care for it. What was it a movie where he was a knight? Yeah, that's exactly knight, what was I'm it, thinking. Was it a knight's tale? It was a, a knight's tale. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, I've seen pieces of it, and I was like, I don't really get it. Uh, because apparently there's, like, modern things in that period movie. Yeah. Like, isn't one of the characters wearing, like, Nikes or something? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's... Okay. And I was like, I don't really understand. But, I, you know, whatever. You gotta see the movie to understand it. No, I'm not defending a night's tale. <laughs> but when I saw this Papillon, all I could think of was uh, Heath from yeah. a night's tale. He's like, like, is that Heath Ledger? No, I CGI know. CGI crew recreated. They would have made a big deal if that's what they were trying to do. But anyway, yeah. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. No, they're not lovers, but it looks like one hell of an adventure. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so the next movie we took a look at was The Sisters Brothers. Now, this is gonna star Joaquin Phoenix and. What's that guy that's in everything? C. Riley? John C. Riley. John. I was like, it's not Philip C. Riley. It's John C. Riley. Mm-hmm. They are brothers. They are the sisters' brothers, and it looks like they rob people. It's, are they step brothers? I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like this is the oh, type of movie. Oh, because the movie was in. Ha ha ha. I was gonna say, did you, did you, did you catch God it? damn it. <laughs> now, yeah, now I get it. Okay, so it looks like the type of movie where they rob people, and this is like, you know, the Wild West, this is what they do, but they want to do a score so big that they could retire, mm. and it also looks like it's a comedy. There's there, there was comedy in there, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm at that point in my life where I'm starting to really appreciate Westerns. I would really like to go see this, even though I'm not really big on John C. Riley, This one looks pretty good. I'm not saying these are all gay-themed, but when I saw Jake Gyllenhaal, I got a little Brokeback oh, Mountain come Part 2. Oh, on. Two. They were in these. Speaking of Dang. Heath Ledger, that's right. Yeah, I was gonna call it. I was be like, uh, "Is this broke that mountain too?" Hi. Wow. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal is in this movie, and it looks like uh, he wants to kill the sisters brothers. Bro, it, it, yeah. Like, are they trying to steal something from Jake Gyllenhaal? And he's like, uh, uh. again, the storyline is kind of confusing. And then who is the guy with the with the mustache? That he guy who was do in. It? The night of. Okay. If you've watched the HBO special, I no. felt like that really kicked him off. Because whatever he was in before, I did not know his relevance until that. And he was so good in it. So, so you're so, talking about the chemist that was going to make yeah. stuff in the... Oh, I've seen him in Lord knows what. I want to say maybe something military related. But I do like... He's a character actor. So and him and really Jake Gyllenhaal are going to search for gold together. Mm-hmm. And that character made some kind of chemical formula to put in the water yeah. to actually find it. And then to form it somehow. So, yeah, I guess the Sisters Brothers want to take that from from them. I didn't see that. I saw two storylines, and then somehow they were kind of merging together. But if you... Tell me what you think... Tell me about what you saw in the trailer, Sarah. 
just just from what the what was his name the guy the chemist what's it I don't know his name his actor the actor's name we don't know what the must we'll call him mustache tell tell me what he did in this trailer <laughs> he looked like he was hiding out and what did he what did he do throughout the whole trailer pretty much hide in a tent hide <laughs> and look at Jake Gyllenhaal like he. <laughs> Like, like you he, know, mm-hmm. like, like he stole something. No, 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 no. He wanted to boink him. no those oh, okay. looks were not. Hey, man, he I, I know you him. did. Yes, those looks were like, like a little bit of a smile and like yeah. these looks. And I'm like, wait a second. And this is Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> What's going on? And and then for some reason the the brothers were like no longer in the trailer until the very end. And yeah. I was like, wait, is this the same movie still? <laughs> God. They I, took I the know. ideas of two separate movies and like, you know what, we can make this into one. I, I think so. I, I feel like in, in the creative room or whatever, they're like, y- you're on to something and, and you're on to something. Work together. Y'all are one project. And I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Warner Brothers is on the phone. He's like, but, but this original script is Cowboys vs. Aliens 2, the prequel. Make it work. What are With y'all? With the sisters' brothers. It's like, what are y'all doing? Broke Bat Mountain 2. Okay, make it work. It's like, there's a period <laughs> piece, happy metal ground, make it happen. Yep. <laughs> I think we just cracked the code, bro. That's a, that's really how Hollywood writing rooms work. <laughs> Y'all go watch the trailer. Let me know the 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 looks from the mustache guy. That's what made me feel to get. I got those vibes. Goodness. I was like, whoa, what's happening? Butch y'all. And I just joked about the other movies. So I was like, huh? Am I stuck still in the other one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next movie we got is uh, starring uh, what is it? Forrest Whitaker and Johnny Depp. It oh is City goodness. of Lies. This movie is about the murder of Biggie Smalls, the notorious B.I.G., and why no arrests have been made. So yes, there's please. there's a lot of speculation as to why the, these murders haven't been solved. Yeah. Why, who did it, and why don't we know who who or what like everything about it being solved? And so one thing that they one line that they say is like, if this hasn't been solved, it's because the cops don't want it to be solved. And then they say something towards the end that make you believe that who did it? Mm-hmm. The cops. Yeah. Right? It very well could have been, yeah. When I saw Johnny Depp, of course, immediately I thought this was going to be like Tim Burton's City of Lies. I don't know why. <laughs> I was like, this is a Tim Burton's City of Lies, huh? I had no idea it was going to be about the murder of Tupac and Biggie Smalls. Yeah. Why? Everybody's talking about that now. There's I know, a there, show about there it. There was a show. I would really like to watch the show... Um, I don't know if it's still going on or if it finally concluded. It's been 20 years. That's why. Oh, it's, okay. So that's what. That's why. Stuff like that has always fascinated me because it's something that... How is something that high profile not been solved? And they say it in the trailer, 20 years, not a single arrest. Not even by mistake, you know? Yeah. At least arrest somebody and then like 10 years later, he's like, you know what? We we're wrong. You out, bro. Get we're, out of here. We were wrong, kid. We were wrong. Here's 50 bucks. Here's a small duplex. Get out of here. But I'm not a kid. I'm 39. <laughs> you, you stole my life. And he's like, look, man, the city of L.A., we apologize. <clears throat> here, have a cigarette. Nobody does that anymore. <laughs> you're, you're killing yourself. You know that? Ugh. <laughs> Sarah, who do you think killed Biggie and Tupac? I can't help but to think that it's still all gang related because gang members just don't talk. Yeah, that is true. So they literally kept it probably to their grave because most likely they're dead. This is like 9-11 secrets because like right? no one's talked. I don't know. There are some wonders in the world that I want answers to. Aliens, Bigfoot, Loch Ness. How did these two fools die? <laughs> Who did it? 2016 uh, presidential election. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> God. The the trailer <laughs> did allude to the police killing them yeah. or killing Biggie, but if it was the police, why would the police want Biggie Smalls dead, a rapper? I know because he was like it just doesn't. I mean, matter. he was he was involved with gang members, but at the time of you know at the time of his death, he had a, a little girl, and he had changed his way of life to being straight. Only I associate, you know, this is my crew of men, but. Whatever they do, that is not me. Why I don't understand why the police would have motive to do anything to Biggie or Tupac or whatever. Maybe Tupac bought members of the police to kill Biggie Smalls, but you know, I mean, I know not this Tupac. was like not was it Tupac. East Coast, West Coast, or whatever the fuck I mean, it was. That's how it started, but yeah. not not the killing. But it's the, all about dead, the music, bro. It wasn't about the fuck. No, I, I think there's bigger. Th- either the the an officer did it by accident. I could see that. I think okay. he was probably paid off. But by who? And not... Gangs! But 
No, okay. Mafia. Somebody, right? Somebody <laughs> bigger. And I'm not going to say... They're close to Vegas. There's mafia there. Tor- towards the end, Tupac did start talking a lot about uh, the occult and a bigger... The, a bigger... Uh, the higher power. Are we talking about Vince McMahon? Illuminati? No! <laughs> We're Vince not McMahon. Vince McMahon. <laughs> it was me, Austin! <laughs> he takes off the hood and it's Vince? No. Oh, no. Okay, Sarah... Sarah, Sarah so Sarah thinks it's it. the mom. He's like, I want this Biggie Smalls. Go on. The Godfather. There yeah. you go. That's what yeah. he's like. He talks like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want Brando. Biggie Smalls? Go on, boss. <laughs> oh my god, what was his name? What? <laughs> your dude's name? The, what, your, the, your character? That punches you? <laughs> yes, the one that punches me to try I don't to have know a if miscarriage. He had, did he have a name? Yes. Oh wow, I it gave him It was some him stupid a, name. Oh, I don't ah, even remember giving her name. Marvin. Do you remember the character where... <sighs> I know what she's talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Orders from the boss. <laughs> oh my god, should I tell the story like how it started? Yes. It had something to do with like you somehow getting pregnant, right? Yes. And then... <laughs> Somehow, if I turn up pregnant, this is he's going to <laughs> he's going to send this dude on me, <laughs> and, and he's going to punch me in the stomach, missing my gut, and he's going to say orders from the boss. He's going to punch bottles. her like in the 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 breast area, like with that bone, the sternum. He yeah. punches her a little high because he's dumb, and he like he goes orders from the boss. Wham! <laughs> she goes down and she's holding her chest, and he like waddles. He goes. <laughs> And he drives a Volkswagen climbs Beetle. In the, climbs in the he car. He audibly walks away. <laughs> yes. And as he's getting in the car, he opens the door and he goes, <laughs> This is just him entering the car. Yeah, he gets in the car, turns the key, and he goes, <laughs> And then it finally turns over. He looks back, Sarah's still. What is this car? <laughs> How fat is this guy? Yeah. There's like, a lot as happening. He, like, as he's like, he's a big round Eminem man and he's just wandering and sweating bullets after one punch, but it was a good one because it lifted Sarah off her feet and she collapsed, but it was in the sternum. He knocked her air out. <laughs> Completely missed the mark. It was like, orders from the boss. And then he just like. <laughs> if we were reading a book, that's what it would be like. It's a orders from the boss and then audibly walks away. We need to get t-shirts that are just sweating and breathing heavy. It was, I don't even know why I made that stupid story. It was, the, oh man. No kids. No He's kids. always threatening if I get, but, if I turn up pregnant. But you know what? No when kids. We, when we no were kids. going to WrestleMania, I told that story and Anna and David both had a hearty laugh about it. And it was the voice. And I was like, really? It's the voice? That Okay, I guess. Now I get to hear it when I listen to the editing and the playback. I'll hear it and I'll be like, oh wow, I guess it is truly funny. Oh, man. <laughs> but we need to figure out his name again, or name him Marvin. <laughs> I can't believe I gave him a name. You did. It's, but it's something stupid, <laughs> it, obviously. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it's something stupid. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> like, there's parts of my life that I'm just going to forget. Like, I'm going to remember this bit, but apparently I gave him a name. We'll remember forever now. Oh, yeah. I'll remember forever. The last live-action trailer that we looked at was Christopher Robin. Not a teaser. This was like a two-and-a-half-minute trailer. And we get the story that Christopher Robin... Had Winnie the Pooh, la di la when he was a kid, he grew up. As we know him, as yeah. a kid. Yeah, he grew up to become Obi-Wan Kenobi. And <laughs> then he, from the stresses <laughs> of everyday work, needed to like relax. And so Winnie the Pooh came back into his life, convinced him to unwind in the land where they had fun. And then he was like, okay, great, we had fun. I need to go back to my world. So he crawls through the tree goes back to his world and then Pooh Bear and his buddies are like we miss him blah 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 let's go to the real world and see Christopher Robin and help him through this ordeal and it is adorable all the characters look good and they sound amazing they, yeah. Sarah said uh, they sounded like the original voices they yeah. do all these characters look and sound great this is probably going to be something that would probably make me cry yeah that that's what I was going to say this is a tearjerker because I feel <laughs> like if, if you saw Winnie the Pooh as a kid yeah. You definitely are going to love seeing this. It's it's going to intrigue you. Yeah. The way they move mm-hmm. is really good. And Tigger is uh, my favorite out of the whole bunch. And it was really cool to see that they're all faded. And they look like beaten they old toys. They look old. Yeah. Like, even that... Tigger looks like he has white in his fur. Yeah. <laughs> his color. Like at one time he was probably once a vibrant orange. Yeah. He's now a very faded beige or something. 
oh, they look so good. It, 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 it makes you sad because it's like yeah. time has passed. We used to see that as a kid. We are older now. Yeah. Yes. They are older. <laughs> I love how Winnie the Pooh rationalizes everything. What did he What did he say at the very end of the trailer? People say doing nothing is impossible, but I do nothing almost every day. I do nothing every day. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, Pooh, that's not what it means. <laughs> And then he goes, where are we going? And then Pooh says, oh, I usually walk in the direction opposite of where I'm coming from, and that's how I get to where I'm going. And it's like, what? That doesn't. That really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Wow, you really remembered this But it's trailer. Pooh Bear. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the camera work helps a lot, too, because they don't have a smile, per se. They're, mm-hmm. they're not really expressive. But the camera work does, a, does wonders. Yeah. It, it's good for comedic timing. It's good for all of it. Now, we didn't get to hear Roo, Rabbit, or Rue's mom talk. And did Piglet talk? We I don't think we heard Piglet. Yeah, he, he did clapped. clap. Did he say yay or something? I heard a yay, but when the camera went to him, I, it wasn't him. Oh, okay. But we really heard Pooh, Eeyore, and Tigger. Yeah. Did y'all see Owl in the trailer? No. When they're all like, it looks like they're huddled in like a little dark room. It's like when Rue and his mom and Rabbit's like in the back. Owl is front and on the bottom corner. Oh. And it looks like Owl's a real owl. It should be. That's what it looked like. It was, should is be. that what it was? Yeah, because it was. Because owl it was wasn't, a real owl. Yeah, Owl wasn't part of the toys. Oh, okay. So this comes out, what, in, is it September? Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's so long from now. That's, that's dumb. The movie's probably already ready to go. Or wait, they, or was that the Giant Depp movie that comes... Giant Depp? Oh, that comes, comes out. out September. That comes out later this year. When does Christopher Robin come out? Coming soon. Because Disney's yeah, jerks? Yeah, coming this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, film. the final trailer that we took a look at was a video game, and Sarah probably had no interest in it. No. <laughs> this I'm going to be put on mute right now. This is Battlefield V, or Battlefield V. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, it's no, there's no way to like Battlefield <laughs> V. Why V? Now, the trailer here is you're basically dropped in the middle of a war, and all hell is breaking loose. Th- this can't be how actual war was, right? No. Like, there's way too much shit happening uh, in this trailer. The, the imagination definitely, uh, what's the word? Run, run amok, it ran amok. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so take, okay, you're doing the firefight in an open field, and then you have the tanks invading a small town, whatever, and then you have the air bombers coming in, and then you have the airplanes coming in and dropping napalm. It feels like all of these events should have been happening over a 50-mile radius, and they just crunched it into, like, a three-city block radius. Right. And that's how all this mayhem just continues, and it's nonstop. It looked cool with the plane flying around and dropping stuff, the grenades, the bombs, the shooting, the everything. Like yeah. It was, it was interesting. Did you notice the lady had, a like, a mannequin hand? No. She had like a claw. I wasn't sure if it was like a robot hand because everything happens so fast. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, when does this take place? Is it a period game or is it like, I don't know, I don't want to say like a steampunk because one of the uniforms that one of these play, these soldiers is wearing looks to be like a colonial mix of modern gear with like the pants and boots of something colonial soldiers would have worn. Again, imagination. And then this lady has like a claw hand and yet she... Is like saving your butt, and she has a, a bat wrapped in barbed wire. There's a whole lot of chaos going on in this game. It actually looks very interesting to play. It looks about on par to be with, uh, was it Call of Duty World War II? That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. I think I would like to give this type of game a try. Uh, when you end up doing a lot of games like this, you wander into like Modern Warfare, Future Warfare, Black Ops, and all that. But when you dial it back to a time period where the guns seem to be a lot simpler... That's the type of game that I'd be more willing to play. Yeah, but these guns look pretty advanced. They did. They look yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah, not like in uh, the brothers and the sisters, or just the sisters and brothers. The sisters brothers. So you're you're doing the the two hand for the one pistol. Yeah. Where you're the little tell. That hammer. It? The hammer. Yeah, yeah. You're using one hand to pull the hammer back, and then the other hand pulls the trigger. Sarah, are these the type of games that you just detest when it comes to uh, modern video games? I don't want to say I detest. It just doesn't catch my interest. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not interesting. Like, <laughs> who made this? Uh, is it Activision? I didn't see Activision. I'm not entirely sure. Oh. I don't know who makes the Battlefield games. I just know that this is like going to be one of those games that's going to be pretty popular because this is a genre that has really <laughs> flourished in the past five years. 
Well, for those of you who play, uh, who have played Battlefield before, because this is Battlefield V. Yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely, it looks good. It definitely yeah. looks good. The graphics are beautifully done. Yeah, and the sound editing is on par with that of like any war movie. Mm-hmm. This is the type of chaos, like, and it's just when you have all of this craziness happening, and you just grabbing random guns. I love hearing like the sounds that goes into everything. And then, of course, you know, the explosions, the guns in the background, and then, like, uh, things go hazy because you just got your ears blown, and you're just like, oh, my God, what the fuck is happening? There wasn't a lot of dialogue, now that I think about it. No, this was a showcase trailer. Yeah. Like, this is the craziness that you're going to happen, and then we actually saw some gameplay. Yeah, towards the end. Yeah, towards uh, the end. So, during the game, there's probably going to be more dialogue, like, we oh, need yeah. to get the grenades, or they're yeah. getting close to the bunkers. Okay, so in, in video games and in movies, when you're actually put in the heat of battle, if that was me, I would immediately accidentally shoot the wrong person, or I would immediately get shot and just die because of everything that's happening around. In the heat of battle, how did this person identify who's the bad guys and who's the en- or, and who's the good guys? I think I even said that during the trailer. I was like, he keeps shooting his own people. You're like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. Well, they they would know, right? Because they know that, okay, North Korea is wearing this, we're wearing this. You yeah. Know? But like in the heat of battle, let's say we're wearing jungle colors and so is the enemy. North Korea would what wear the like hell? red. Oi. <laughs> no, I think just for this, they didn't put like any gamer tag. Because yeah. normally it would show gamer tag and it would be so like red and blue. Yeah. So, like, your team would be the color blue. So your partner's name or teammate's name would also be in blue. And then the enemy would be in red. Unless this was a a trailer for the campaign. Which you could also do co-op campaign. You could do those. I don't know if this type of game... I'm willing to bet that this is the type of game where they have, like, a bare basic campaign and all of the focus went into multiplayer type of battle royale type of thing. What if it's one of those games where they keep it simple and you can't shoot your own person, your own team? Oh, that's... That's... Unreal. That's dumb. <laughs> I remember when that was a thing in video that games. Was. And I was like, oh, that's good, but... I mean, come on. That's not realistic. It's not realistic. Yeah. It takes the edge off. You can just shoot like, <laughs> like a wild person. Yeah. Did you hear that uh, a couple of days ago, for a moment, Netflix was worth more than Disney? I heard about the billions, right? Something in billions? Oh, yeah. And of course, it's going to be billions. Sarah, did you hear about this? I sent it to you. Was it you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like Netflix is worth more than Comcast and Disney. Yeah. Okay, so this day, this lasted for about a day. And then things changed. Uh, a few days ago on the market, value soared above $153 billion, which overtook Disney as the most valuable media company. Their shares went up as Disney, Comcast, and the broader market fell. But Disney regra- regained the crown... Uh, by the close after Netflix shares paired their gains, taking the streaming service cap below $152 billion. So when it was all said and done, they went down a billion dollars and Disney took over again. <laughs> Netflix is still the second place after it surpassed Comcast this past Wednesday. The company's success has demonstrated that its bet on original programming, such as 13 Reasons Why, Stranger Things, and Orange is the New Black has paid off. Even after the announcement of a price hike, for subscribers last year, business hasn't faltered. Other competition from Hulu, Amazon, Prime has not dented their growth in the slightest. Do you agree with that? Could it be all original programming is, is what's driving Netflix to just, you know... Absolutely. Go I, Get to number two and then stay there. Yeah. I thought it was the opposite. I heard that because of the original stuff, Netflix had no money. Well, now they're actually saving money by doing their own original series. I yeah. Would- in the long run, they pay less licensing fees out to like major movies. Like they still have some Marvel stuff on there. Mm-hmm. That stuff can't be cheap. No. no, no, of course not. Well, speaking of Disney, though, did you guys hear about Roseanne? Yes. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Now, let me ask you this: since you have heard about it, yeah, what do you? How do you guys think that the the cast, the other cast members, everybody else in the crew, anybody involved, basically, is now out of a job because she said what she said? I don't know what she said. I actually tried to look up for the exact tweet of what it was she said, but come on, you had to know going into this that she was kind of a crazy person. Right. Uh, Madison uh, said that it was not her first rodeo, right? But when she was very famous and she had you know her start in this uh, world of celebrity, there was no Twitter. 
Yeah. And now, you know, she's tweeting stuff out. And, and I, th- I think it was actually encouraged when she was... Well, the first episode that, that was uh, for the... I guess the pilot for the reboot did really well. It had a lot of high ratings. I, I think bigger than anybody ever expected, including the studio. And so... Why would they take her off the air? I mean, they'd probably give her well, they, as many seasons as she wanted if they're pulling in big numbers. No, but it was it was so big. The the numbers were so big that they were like, "This is crazy. We're gonna." They were ready to rock and roll, right? But then she makes this tweet, and it, you not you kind of know what it was about, right? Or you just think you just know it's racist. Yeah, that's all I heard. It was. It's, I saw a lot of reactions tweets to it, mm-hmm. but I could not find her actual tweet because I wanted to read it. Do, do you remember what she said? No, I. Can't remember who it was targeted to. Obama and his aide, one of his aides that used to work with him. Uh, I don't know why she was commenting on Obama and that and that aide, but she said basically that that was the Muslim Brotherhood of. Oh my God! The drop Muslim, it. The Muslim Brotherhood uh, mixed in with Planet of the Apes. Oh, that's right. Wow. That's exactly. Jesus. What she said. The Muslim Brotherhood mixed with Planet of the Apes. Oh my God. Yes. Who, who says, that's a good tweet? She was drunk. <laughs> well, she came back today, and she said that, well, when she tweeted that, and people ate her alive, pressuring ABC to cancel the show, which they did, because they're like, we don't want to be less than Netflix again. Um, <laughs> that's what would do it. If you don't cancel, people will be up in arms, and you'll just never hear the end of it. So they canceled the show. A, yeah. a very popular, successful, crazy, in the work show. But today she jumps back on Twitter and she says that uh, she was on Ambien? Am- Ambien? Ambien? Something like that. Exactly that. Yeah, that's what she said she said she was on. And that uh, because when she tweeted that first out and then they, they ate her alive, she said, I'm leaving Twitter. I apologize. That joke was done in bad taste. And then she stopped. But then she came back today and said, well, it was 2 o'clock in the morning and I was on Ambien, Ambien, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, kind of like give me a break. <laughs> no. this, this pissed off people even more one of the tweets I saw was like yeah when I take medicine I turn racist <laughs> like no you don't just take medicine and that comes out of your mouth it's almost like yeah. being drunk so being drugged up you speak the truth you still s- what you feel yeah right it's not the truth but it's what you feel it's mm-hmm. what you feel at your core well to me that's the truth that it is a mu- what you're feeling is Muslim your truth oh oh okay yeah. Not to mix it up, but yes, it's your truth. It's what you feel. What she said was her truth. Yeah. 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 But deep down she's just twenty four seven racist, but you have to wear a mask when you're gonna, when you're a public <laughs> figure if you want to be beloved. So by... to, to say the least it backfired. That's what happened in Roseanne's world today. <laughs> God. It's okay, John Goodman didn't need this. Uh he He's didn't. Doing just fine. He didn't, but what about like uh just anybody else in the crew? I wish I could have seen some of these episodes. Uh you I think you still can oh i doubt it not not streamed <laughs> off of whatever where, yeah. where were they being i would imagine that they would have been on abc.com where you could stream them the website yeah their, their website their streaming website okay uh, but you could still download them i'm sure oh you yeah still, you can, can you get, imagine netflix is like we'll you can pick up get, roseanne you can get anything wink yeah you can get anything <laughs> in this world well there were some cast members that were like thank goodness that the show is done i don't want to be associated with that type if of this is happening if she is that way, I don't want to be a part of this. Yeah. I-, I thought about that. I thought of like Roseanne reaching out to everybody and going like, "I'm so sorry. I know that now you'll have to return that G wagon you just bought, or like whatever, <laughs> right?" Because it Goodness. was the ratings were through the roof. But so, in my head, I pictured her reaching out to everybody and saying, "I'm so sorry. I'll help you pay for this or whatever." Uh, but what if we did this? What if we got caught or there was a, a video that that surfaced where? We're all celebrating that the network canceled the show because that was our aim. That like, that's what we wanted to do, and then maybe that way somebody else will pick us up. Like, what if wow. they did? Like that would be how crazy would that be? They'd be like, wait, they want it out of their contracts, and then it's like, yeah, Netflix, what's up? Goodness. And then Netflix is like an original, you know, reboot oh or whatever, God. and it's not called Roseanne. It's oh, oh, it's like a surrounding the the daughter, but the 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 daughter still has Roseanne and. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, I was about to say because if ABC still owns Roseanne, they would have. What to was buy it? it? What's the name of the last name of all the the, the family? I don't know anything about the show. Okay, because I can't remember. Like, let's say that the show is called the whatever their last name was, yeah. and that's how Netflix. That's their workaround. That, that's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, it's either about the daughter whose parents happen to be Roseanne. And <laughs> go 
Tom Goodman. Like, they I do don't the know. same thing for Fuller House. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. hilarious. They and just follow like, the daughter. Yeah. And Netflix is like getting all of it. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't think Netflix would touch that. You could if you did the party thing where it's like, Man. we did this to get out. Man, but they were making, I'm sure they were banking though. I mean, Roseanne was a juggernaut when her original series was on the air back in the 90s. I was blown away. and they, But they were making political statements in the show, which made them popular. And it was pro-Trump stuff, which was very surprising. The original series? I think everybody secretly likes Trump, and then but nobody wants to admit it. And then when they see it on... Yeah, on this show, on the reboot, it was... Why would why would the old Roseanne be pro-Trump? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, it was, it was... There was a lot of political <laughs> statements done in the show, and people liked it. They, they Like I said, it was one of the... I think they liked it because nice. it was just Roseanne. Yeah. I don't know, probably. I mean, I don't like Trump. What's to like? What's to hate? No, never mind. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> Either What's way. Date? <laughs> God. Oh my goodness. Did you guys hear about Tom Cruise uh not rolling out uh joining the DC extended universe of movies? So he had an opportunity? He might. He might have an opportunity. He had or ha- might have. He might have. I mean, he knows Superman. Okay. Tell me more. <laughs> While doing some press for the new Mission Impossible film Henry Cavill, who is Superman, uh, was asked on his thoughts if uh, his Mission Impossible co-star would possibly join the DC Extended Universe, to which he said, I think that would be something very interesting. Absolutely. When asked Tom, he had this to say, there's always another mountain in, any, in anything. I'll never say no if I find something that's interesting and I think audiences would enjoy. If they'd be entertained by it, I feel like I can contribute something to it. Back in 2017, Cruz was on the shortlist to play the Green Lantern, and since there has been speculation of how a 55-year-old actor could play Hal Jordan, Cruz could play a much older Hal Jordan that's been off saving the universe and returns to Earth to assist the Justice League should Darkseid ever appear in any of the movies. So I do remember that. I do remember when they were like, okay, going into Justice League, we're going to do a solo Green Lantern movie, and then it got pushed back to like 2020, and they're like, it's going to be called the Green Lantern Corps, and they thought going into Justice League, they were going to introduce the Green Lantern as like a third act savior to help the League take down whatever bad guy they have. Because if you remember back, promoting the Justice League, there were posters that said Unite the Seven, and they had Superman, Wonder Woman... Flash, Aquaman, all like in their individual posters, and it said above them, Unite the Seven. But then when the movie comes around, there's only six of them. And you're like, well, the seventh was obviously going to be the Green Lantern. Where the hell is the Green Lantern? Where was Ryan Reynolds? Uh, I think he was off fixing the. Never mind. You de- Have you seen Deadpool 2? I haven't. Oh, God. Do you care to? I Of course. I'm going to see it. I'm okay. going to see it well, for sure. Okay. okay. <laughs> An end credit scene will tell you where Ryan Reynolds was. Matt. I was I was told about that credit. Only that credit. About the Green Lantern thing? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Deadpool... Well, welcome to the big leagues. Deadpool goes back in time and he shoots Ryan Reynolds in the back of the head for reading the Green Lantern script. And he saves us all from that tragedy. That was so... So it's not... It's not... Uh, what is it? Canon? That, what? That, that Green Lantern? The Green Lantern. Um, allegedly, no. <laughs> well, now with the success of Deadpool 2... Goodness. Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern is back on the big screen. Do you think that Tom Cruise could be a good superhero in any capacity? I think he would be a good actor for it, but I don't buy anything in action with Tom Cruise. Really? He's little. <laughs> he, is, he is a short guy. He's about, I mean, was he a little bit taller than me? He, yeah. He's 5'3". Uh, five, he, he's, five he's shorter than you. He's shorter than me? Yeah. I think him and Chris Rock are relatively the same height, actually. So they're because bo- they're both short. Yeah, Chris Rock, the black guy, the only black guy. How many Chris Rocks are there? <laughs> well, that uh, I did not know Chris Rock was that little. Yeah, he's small. Wow, he looks lanky. Yeah, like tall. Oh, I don't know. I just get the impression that he's a tall guy. Here, well, I'll that's look. what they wanted us to believe about Tom Cruise. But then I saw him, and then not in person, obviously. Yeah. We didn't have tea or anything, but. Um, <laughs> And then ever since then, I was like, I don't believe anything. I, I, you were so pathetically, like, no. Well, that's why you cast people around him 
that are about his height, so he looks Nobody normal. Nobody is that short. All, like, <laughs> I'm sure you could find extras and you know other co-stars. So, or you shoot around oh. Tom being short, and you have the angle of the lens slightly lower, looking up at him. Right. It's, it's all about the angles with him, yeah. but not the people. It's the angles. What's Sarah? What I'm was... sorry. Tom Cruise is 5'7". <laughs> oh, okay, so he's like my height, yeah. which is still small. That's still... So Chris Rock is the shortest, I think. Hold on. Okay. Oh, okay. Christopher Rock. And she's like, nope, Martin Lawrence is. It's all there in mind. He is black. Oh, he's 5'10? Just ignore me. There we go. There we go. <laughs> he's 5'10. <five ten. laughs> then who are you thinking? I don't know. Thinking... There is a black guy that's. Sh- Wait, Kevin Hart. I'm an idiot. Kevin yeah. Hart's a tiny man. Sorry. We... That one we know. <laughs> he's 5'4. Okay. He is. He's little. <laughs> but God bless him. He is hilarious. He was described as Shaq's penis in one of the. Uh... Oh my God. Yeah, wow. they were like. Aren't you like Shaq's penis? Like, you're the size of his penis, right? Wow. I've said penis so many times now. But yeah. it was during one of those uh, where they, they burn each other on Comedy Central. What is it called? Roast? Yes. Oh, wow. Burn each other. That's good that they still do this. <laughs> but yeah, uh, for years I have thought that Tom Cruise should have been a superhero. And now that he's getting much older, I was like, okay. If they don't get Idris Elba to play um, John Stewart, the black Green Lantern, and get him to just be an older version of that, I would have naturally picked Tom Cruise to be the to be Hal Jordan, to be a Green Lantern, because I think he could do it. But if you look at everyone that's cast in the Justice League, they're all fucking mountains. It, yeah, and they're younger. Like Wonder Woman is tall, Ben Affleck's a giant, Henry Cavill is jacked, and Aquaman is huge. Young. Well, Aquaman can be old. You can well, yeah, but... Blue. Who knows what happens in the water? But if Hal Jordan has been the Lantern for the past ten years, and he's been off-world with the Corps doing stuff, and that's what the Green Lantern Corps is, they go and, you know, whatever they're doing. That would give a, a reason as to why he wasn't here on Earth when Superman came. Because if you look at the timeline of this entire universe, how long has Superman actually been here? Yeah. It's been like three years from the time that he's, he or did his thing in his movie, fought General Zod, to the events of the Justice. He was probably like three, maybe four years. Okay. So if Hal Jordan has been gone this whole time, I mean, even before then, why wouldn't anybody mention a lantern defending Earth unless the news media just didn't know about it? It was in a different part of it. Was uh, Trump? Trump uh, denied the media. He denied the media that there was an yeah, existence of a lantern. That, yeah. Oh God, he's a man flying around in green tights. No, he's CG. He's not wearing tights. Yeah. <laughs> but can we all agree that Tom Cruise has the best sprint in the business? I can't because I don't know. You don't not know because I disagree. When he starts running. Yeah, I don't know that that's the best. I've never seen him. You've never seen him run? No, no, no. I have. I just can't. I don't remember <laughs> specifics. I can't be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah, how does Tom Cruise run? Fine, I guess. I'm not a fan. Oh, you don't like Tom Cruise? Yeah, yeah. What did he ever do? Wow. He's, he's, <laughs> he's so little and now old. Yeah. Nobody should be a fan. I mean, he's still handsome. And he still looks. He still. Oh my god! He still you're talking looks, about the most boring topics now. Now you've been on DC for a little bit, and Tom Cruise. Let's talk about something else. Thank okay. you. Okay. How about Pokemon Go? Yay! You mean Pokemon Let's Go? <laughs> uh, no, no. Pokemon Go, the video game. Oh, the what, old one. The, the one? game that you no, guys the, have played on. Uh, yeah, the yeah. one on the yeah, phone. Yeah, Pokemon Go. Guys, Nintendo dropped the trailer yesterday for Pokemon Let's Go, which. Includes oh? Pokemon Go. So oh? now, yeah, so you can do the battling. You can do just it's it's not gonna be on the Nintendo Switch in November, <gasps> and you can use the Pokemon that you've caught on Pokemon Go. Damn. Okay, now I want a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> oh, now you want a Nintendo <laughs> Switch? No, she's not the only one. Now everybody wants a Nintendo Switch. Now Bro, we're November, talking. God November damn. is gonna be the month, and it's called Pokemon Let's Go. Let's Go. Okay, well, Pokemon Go will add Sun and Moon's Alolan forms for Generation One Pokemon. Do y'all know what that is? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, good. The announcement came from Pokemon Go's official website that the alternate forms will make their way into the game in coming weeks. Alolan forms are the variants of some of the original 151 Kanto Pokemon and were introduced in Sun and Moon back in 2016. Specific Pokemon coming to Go haven't been revealed yet, but silhouettes in the announcement image could include Alolan, Alolan Diglett, Meowth, Volpix, Exeguter, and Raicha. Executor. 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 Yes. I, I typed it up exactly how it was written, and I was like, uh, oh, Executor. Executor. 
<laughs> Raicha and many more. Okay, so good. Did you guys you just understood. say Raicha? Raichu. No, it's... What? Where? R-A-I-C-H-A. That is exactly Ra- how it was oh, taken. no, what is Raicha? When I, when I typed it in, I was like... Oh, okay. I looked and I was like, because all of R-A-I-C-H-A. Then it's probably like a modified, like with a stone or something. Yeah, modified Raichu. Because as I was typing in all these Pokemon, of course the uh, autocorrect is like, this is wrong, this is wrong. Because so, okay. it doesn't recognize these as words. And so I was like, Raicha? And I looked and I was like, Raicha? Raicha? Okay. Okay. Rachel. I think, no, I think that's a typo. It's supposed to be Raichu. Okay, so but that's that what I thought it was. Because they, well, See? because they started... Yeah, that guy. It's supposed to be a U, babe. Yeah, they, they've been trying to... Uh, like, they add evolutions to Pokemon that didn't have evolutions before. Like, like Pikachu was just Pikachu and then Raichu, right? Oh, but, now they have Raichu! But then... <laughs> no, but then but then they made Pichu up. Oh, Pichu, Pichu sorry. Pichu is Pichu's a Pichu, Pichu, Raichu, Pikachu, and... Oh. So Pichu, so Pichu, Pikachu, Pikachu, Raichu. Raichu. <laughs> so when you said Raicha, I was like, I guess you're going to mega evolve Raichu into Raicha? And she's like this drunk version of Raichu? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> she yells out her window. I really want a Togepi. Aw, Togepi. <laughs> That's cute that you guys know exactly what this is. Because I thought, as soon as I read this paragraph, I'm going to ask y'all, did y'all understand what I said? Y'all did? Okay, good. Discuss. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm i excited now to, to get a, a Nintendo Switch just because of that. And it's so cool that they're going to incorporate everything, all the work, the hard work that these people playing Pokemon Go have done over these last, what is it, a year and a half now? Goodness, it, yeah. you guys have been playing Pokemon 2016. Go. 2016. Yeah, a year and a half. Wow. Mm-hmm. And at that, and I remember that that thing blew up everywhere. No one would talk to me because everyone was looking at their damn phones. Yeah, and I'm like, are y'all playing that Pokemon thing? Yeah. How come you're not? Because I mean, I've never played Pokemon. Yeah. Why would I just jump in now? It won't have the same effect because now we're all Pokemon out because it was not that long ago. And but before that, it had been a while since anything garnered, I think, or intrigued everybody at the scale that it did. But definitely, November is going to be. Very popular for Nintendo. You know, there's a gym at the antique mall over here, right? No. Just. We have a gym here. But see, Shut up. okay, so I stopped playing Pokemon <laughs> Go because people were cheating. Like it, when I found out people were cheating and how they were cheating, I was like, well, no wonder people have all these kinds of Pokemon yeah. and stuff like that. I just lost interest. I myself cheated. I was like, let me see if it's that easy. I went and I cheated. And I was like, okay. How well, did then, you cheat? What do you do? I know you can change your location on your that's phone, That's exactly right? what it is. You just you put a mock location on your phone. You modify it to where you can say that you're actually at the gym or at the wherever. Yeah. And, and you're catching rare Pokemon. I oh, can say okay. I'm in Europe. And I'm catching the Pokemon that are only launched in Europe. And now I've got Farfetch. And now I've got whomever. You yeah. Know? Oh, okay. Pokemon I would never get. Not here. I'd have to go to Australia. I'd have to go to Europe. I'd have to go to Mississippi or whatever. And I did. I went and caught like seven like rare Pokemon. <laughs> and then I was like, this isn't okay, fair. Okay, you need to show me how to do that. <laughs> they no Goodness. Longer, they no longer allow you to oh, do that. Man. Like You can still do it, but then you get banned and you have to wait. And, yeah. Well, that's fine. Do you really want to get banned? I don't care. I mean, it's I just, already go weeks without playing. <laughs> throw, they're going to throw you over the top rope. And they're going to be like, I just eh, want to see eh. if it works and see what I catch. Oh my goodness. She's it like, works. let me use your phone in this case. I'm like, what? Because I don't want to go through raids or go through special little events and team up with people just to, to get capture the, the, so, a Lipus or Larpus. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, the, or the legendary or the leg- a strong yeah. Pokemon. Or, so I quit before the legendary came out, but before that, I did cheat for a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean a little bit. Before that, I was putting work. I was going to the Galveston Island and right? going all at all. The sea wall down is the awesome. Sea, all night. That's all I would do. I was yeah. working. I was receiving unemployment. Yes, unemployment. <laughs> because they. You're lawfully, welcome, Manual. Yeah, they lawfully <laughs> let me go and then rehired me. But. <laughs> There's so many Pokestops <laughs> along that way. All night, I'm, I'm telling you. There's so many gyms. Night, yep. I char- I caught a Charizard out there. Nice. Anyway. At the beach? Anyway. Yeah. N- not at the beach, at the, in the seawall. I don't know why, but that seawall was amazing. Oh, uh, yeah. It still is. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, a police officer overnight, like, uh, it wasn't even a police officer. It was one of those people who guards, like, a hotel or whatever. They're like, hey, you need to get out of here. I was like, uh, why? I'm just, I'm just parked here. They're like, are you in the hotel? Are you checked in in the hotel? And I'm just like, no, not this hotel. And they're like, well, then you need to leave. I was like, why? It's public property. That guy followed me around and then eventually almost hit me head first because he was so mad I was still hunting for Pokemon. 
Oh, and he and he was like, "It's suspicious activity." I was like, "You know what I'm doing? I'm telling you, I'm looking and hunting for Pokemon. What? <laughs> I'm not trying to break in. I'm not. I don't. I don't have anything special on me. You, you, you already know. Why are you so mad, bro? He came this close to hitting my car, like trying to scare me off. Wow. God. This man. is what I was doing to catch Pokemon. Yeah, you were pissing <laughs> off the law. The law, brother. Can we go drive to Galveston? Tonight? That would yeah. be so cool. Are you, wait, like right now, right now? There's well, so many. Obviously like, not right now. We're doing a recording. There, there's not even, like, there's not a part where you're like, oh, this is boring. Like, there's so many stops, and there's so many Pokemon. And at different times, a di- different Pokemon spot. Yeah. Galveston is the place to go. God, yep. you, man, you guys are such nerds. But, it, but it's cute. Just as me. It's cute because there's plenty of things that I get passionate about that it's just like, really? That's what you're going to get passionate about? Yeah. <laughs> kind of like professional wrestling. I mean, we all like wrestling, do you? I'm getting back into it. Just getting back into it? Sports yeah. entertainment? Oh, God. Was Football. It, what, what did uh, <laughs> David call it? Simulated? Stage combatants. Stage combatants. And then I was like, pro wrestling, sports entertainment, simulated stage combatants. Which one rolls off the tongue easiest? Pro wrestling. That's why it'll always stay that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. I mean, it, it is. But yes, in pro, the term pro wrestling... Or sports entertainment encompasses, I feel, professional sports. There are some people that feel, no, sports entertainment is pro wrestling. It's like, no. Whatever. Anyway, uh, WWE is going to be extending their pay-per-views to four hours now. Is this for sure? Yeah, this is for sure. Backlash was like the, what is it, the test run. But they also had the disadvantage of being a week after the Greatest Royal Rumble. And that wasn't a really good show. <clears throat> but now they're going to try to put their best foot forward, and if they're going to have pay-per-view. if they're going to have these super shows, they're going to start an hour earlier instead of going an hour later. See, backlash. The disadvantage was they started at seven and they ended at like ten thirty. See, now they're going to do it and they're going to start at six and probably go to like nine forty-five or whatever. So they have the freedom to go that fourth hour, but they're going to start at six from now on. Holy, how do I spray that? How do you spray that? I don't know. WWE just thinks that giving us more in larger quantities. I guess it'll just equate to monthly. There will be more people tuned into the network, you know, not at any specific given time, but just like in a total. And maybe that's just what they're going for. They just so every quarter they're like, well, we had this many million people tuned into the network and watching this many hours in this, you know, four month period of the year. Yeah, I guess so. If it's to push the network or whatever their agenda is, I mean, they, they know what they're doing. We've discussed this before. They've been doing it for a long time, yeah, and successfully. So, I mean, we saw what would happen with the with the the brand split and the brand only pay per views. Some of them felt like glorified episodes of the shows that they were representing. Mm-hmm. Now they're going to be essentially super shows. You got two whole rosters. Uh, four hours should be enough time to showcase the best of what you got. That's what they said. They shouldn't try to put everybody on the show. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to try to earn to get on a pay per view. Maybe this, maybe this will work. Think because they said the, we're, you're gonna have the best of SmackDown and the best of Raw, right? Yeah. And so Sami Zayn and uh, Shane Mosley or whatever his name is, Bobby uh, Lashley. Yeah. What did I say? Shane Mosley. Okay, so Bobby Lashley and <laughs> Sami Sami Zayn, they are the best of Raw. Yeah, you get stuff like that. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Sarah, how do you feel about four hour pay per views uh, with the big four? Like WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, Survivor Series, and SummerSlam. Those will be five hours. All the rest of them will be four hours. Sarah's psyched. You can't see that? Dude, like, Sarah, calm down. (laughs) I can't contain myself. Quit. Put put your arms down. And I have to put my tits away? (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, and the way she's, it's the delivery. It's all about the delivery. Oh my god, she heard four hours, it was just like, pump and out. Four hours equal tits out. <laughs> wow. And I have to put my tits away? <laughs> what are you saying? I, I'm so ready. She just starts shaking, and is like, what are you doing? Wow. Sarah... Goodness. Good, good luck to WWE, and I hope that this is a good sign or a good thing. <laughs> okay, this past Monday night on Raw, Roman Reigns was not on the show. Did you miss him? Nope. Okay, I did not. I didn't even notice he wasn't on the show until after the fact when I listened to a review podcast about it. I noticed he wasn't on Raw, and I, I noticed not because I want to critique him, but I always want to know... What's WWE's next move? And so I know that Braun Strowman 
is ready to take his place. He never will because he's not as pretty, obviously. But uh, as far as what the WWE wants is the people behind him, that's Braun Strowman. So when I saw Braun opening the show, I'm like, okay, it's not Stephanie, it's not Roman. So then that means Roman's in the main event. And then they said what the main event was going to be. And then I was like, okay, so where's Roman? Roman has to be somewhere. He's the face. Yeah. I even showed you the little ba- the, the, the drop, the backdrop on YouTube TV when you're watching Raw and it's being casted. It's Roman Reigns. Yeah. It's his face and he's like posing and he's like got his arms up. It's Roman Reigns. Right. He's the face. He's, he's definitely the face right now. So and like four years ago, that would have been John Cena. It, not even that long ago, it was, it was John Cena. Yeah. Yeah. So I just know. I'm like, where's Roman? Where's Roman? Where is Roman? And when the show ended, I was like, wow. No one has seen Roman. And then I, I typed it in the Googles, and yeah, apparently that's a topic. Where is Roman? <laughs> well, see, what's so funny is that, like, when he's on the show, he gets booed. And then when he's not on the show, we're like, where the fuck is Roman? Where is Roman? But it's not because I miss him. Yeah, it's I not because we miss that. him. We're just like... Just like I don't watch wrestling because I'm amazed or entertained by it for yeah. different reasons. We're just like, what is y'all's game plan for this guy? Do you really think keeping him off the show for one episode that is going to curb the hatred once he comes back? We're going to miss him so he's <laughs> back. and No. Do you think we would miss him if Roman went away for six months? Yeah. Yeah. It might have to be longer. But yeah. It would have to be longer. <laughs> it would have to be longer. Yeah. I, we would, but I, like I said, we'd have to. he'd have to be reset. Like He'd yeah. have to have a comeback and... No more cargo, nothing. No more bullet, you know. Take vest. off the vest. None of change that. Change like your ring gear. Right. Different song. Yeah. Cut your hair. No, don't. Cut it. <laughs> don't cut your hair. But like you know, different, different yeah. vibes. Okay, I'm gonna ask you something. I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna use this as an example. Several years ago, uh, it was around the time that we kept getting uh, Randy Orton versus Sheamus all the time, and that just remember, right? like God, how many times did they give us that in like a four month period? Quite a bit, actually. Quite yeah, a bit. I do remember that. Okay, I remember Seamus got hurt, and he was gone for what felt like six months. Mm-hmm. He was gone for a long time. Came back from the injury. The very first match they put him in, I immediately remembered why I didn't miss him. Because <laughs> I was like, you are doing the exact same thing you did. Picked up right where ma- you left. I was like, you haven't changed a goddamn bit. If Roman Reigns left for six to eight months and came back and did the exact same thing... Do you think the crowd would be booing and they'll be like, oh, yeah, we remember exactly why we don't care for you. Only now you're not being shoved down our throats, but you haven't changed a bit. It's different because Roman, we know he's the face. We know that that's the guy that they want. Seamus was never the guy. Seamus was just annoying. I think his song did not help. No, his song did not help. Good Lord, his Because the moment I heard his song, I I would either (laughs) mute it. I would mute it. I wouldn't even turn it out. I'd mute it or I'd change the channel until the song was done. Yeah. And then I'd come back. It was so bad. And it just made me not like him. I he had he has a nice body, he's strong, he's but uh He's really good now. Yeah. He's got that I like his look now. You know, but another... he's proven himself though. Before yeah. that it's not that he didn't prove himself. We were just like, Man, you're big, you're strong or whatever. But now we've seen some incredible matches from Seamus and you know he's as tough as they come. Yeah. You know another song that I'm really starting to get like done with is Dolph Ziggler's. I'm I here hate to show his the world. I'm here yes. to show the world. I Come hate on. his song. I'm trying to think of when. Remember when he cashed in and he had the like one of the loudest pops ever. Mm-hmm. Was it with this song or was it the? I can't think of another song that he's had. Oh, yeah, is it you? You as soon as I say it, you'll know it because oh, okay. it's you know this one's. I'm here to show the world. I'm here to show the world. Come on, and then his other one was. Uh, <laughs> all I keep thinking is. Bring it down. Uh, <laughs> Sarah, would you miss Roman Reigns if he went away for eight months? Nope. Goodness. Nope. <laughs> now, do you dislike Roman for the same reasons that we've been talking about him being the chosen one? Or is it his wrestling uh, move set? Is it his look? Is it the way that he conducts himself in interviews where he's a face and talking to faces he comes off as an entitled D-bag? That and... Or I dislike him the same as I like dislike Brock they do the same moves over and over again and they're just they're almost praised for it it's just mm. okay so it's a very limited move set yeah hit on repeat he yeah. does how many superman punches does he do in high profile matchups uh, and spears how okay many sp- so high, pro- high profile right i'm thinking yeah. brock lesnar yeah. he does at least four Superman punches? Superman punches. But ask me how many clotheslines he does. Oh, Jesus. On any given match, you have over 20 clotheslines. How is that your arsenal? 
Well, I mean, you mix in with the 20 clotheslines a Samoan drop every so often. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, the final topic that I got on Doc is it's a topical thing, and it's been going on for about two years now. It is the NFL and the situation that they've had with the national anthem and uh. players kneeling down. Recently, the NFL dropped a new policy that any players who feel that they still want to protest can not be on the field. They have to stay in the locker room if they're going to do that. And the players and personnel that are on the field have to stand for the national anthem. Now, the controversy started with Colin Kaepernick two years ago, kneeling down during the playing of the national anthem. But it was for, he was protesting racial injustice of what was happening to young African-American men and police brutality against young African-American men. But it was still it was, a down, it, a thumbs down for America. It was. St- I mean, I guess that's what it what yeah. happened. It eventually got turned around that it was a disrespectful towards the military and all of that stuff. But it was never about the military or disrespecting a flag. It was only about protesting racial injustice in America. In America, he's ashamed of what. Like I'm mad at you, America, because yeah. you were allowing these things to happen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was a form of protest. But, yeah, then I guess everybody got involved because the NFL has a lot of viewers. Yeah. Everybody watches at least one game or you're following one team or something. But (laughs) a lot of people do. And so, yeah, I could see how any veteran discharged sitting at home watching that. It's like, man, I put my life on the line, you know, and uh, you're going to go over there and just kneel. You know? Now, it, it has to be said that at the time when Colin was still playing and still doing this, the first year that this was happening, that he was approached by members of the military who asked him uh, about his methods of protesting. Why are he, you kneeling, boy? He would explain to them what he was representing and what he was protesting against. And the military personnel that he would explain it to are, after the fact, cool with it because they saw what he was doing. And it wasn't just, well, I'm just going to kneel because I don't like the American flag or I don't like the military thing. Now, once... Our so they were cool with it after. They were cool with it after, but they would go and they would go and ask, with I don't the think explanation. <laughs> So the explanation with the autograph definitely sealed the deal. Uh, I guess you could say that. I don't know if there was any exchanges of goods for a signature Bruh. or anything. Bruh, if you're military and you're getting to talk to this camper, man. He was a quarterback? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you're getting to talk to him, then, you know, you got a, you got an autograph. I mean, there's military personnel... You know, at the events, I'm sure they get to mingle with the players a little bit. Just a little bit, enough for the autograph or the yeah. selfie. Now, it wasn't until our city, our current sitting president spoke his opinion about this whole thing. And there was that famous piece of footage where he says, now, you know... Our president's opinion? Uh, so apparently. And he said, you know, if I see any of these NFL owners, I would like to ask them, you know, get that piece of trash, that son of a bitch, off the field, fire them and all that stuff. And it was... It's been viewed recently that pressure from the president has forced the league to come up with this policy that if you're going to protest, stay in the locker room, and when you're out here, you must stand. If you're going to be on camera, if you're going to be affecting those watching, then you're going to stand. Yeah. Now, if you don't want to, you don't feel like it, fine. Then stay in the locker room till it's game time. Now, as this was going on for the past two seasons, it would be a spectacle. The anthem would play, the cameras would show the ceremony and everything, and then as the song is playing, they would cut to the sidelines to see the line of players, who's standing and who's kneeling. And it was pretty, like, astounding to see whole teams standing, whole teams except one player kneeling and, you know, all this stuff, and you're just like, even the Houston Texans. I saw a photograph of all the Texans except one player, all kneeling except for one. And it that, was, that just puts the players in an awkward position, too, because it's like, hey, man, you, 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 you see Tom? He's in the locker room. Or he kneeled down. Yeah. You know? like it's, it's, but look at it this way. This past season that happened, from week one to the playoffs, not into the playoffs, from week one to week uh, 17, it had started with kneeling. By the end of the season, there was almost none of finger. this. There was almost none because like it had died down. All time. We went through the postseason and the Super Bowl, and it was just like an afterthought. You know, this thing, this thing had dominated sports for at least a whole season. Now it's passed. Now this new policy is dropped, and all this is going to do is who Relight is not it. on the field. Because as soon as it's done, you know the cameras are going to cut to the tunnels. What players are going to be running out? 
And and so with with having the power, all of the power that the NFL does have, because right now they use their power to say you're either in the locker room or you're standing, right? Yeah. Why? I mean, with all that power, why don't you just say the cameras will not pan to the players? Don't give them that pe- that sh- that platform. Don't give that to them, because then nobody at home can complain. Nobody, nothing. Wait till the, you know pan to the the audience for a little bit. Look at the skies. Put a, bl- a flag in the background or something, or to the announcers. Go to the announcers and just you know stadium wide. Don't do not focus on the players. Do not just for a brief moment while the thing is on. Do not go to the players. Period. Don't give them the platform. Because I think what's going to end up happening is sideline reporters are going to report who came out onto the field. Yeah, but only fans for a little gonna, bit. Fans are going to record it. But only for a little bit. They no, Everybody would have to chase. Yeah. Everybody would have to look for it. They'd have to find this stuff. And yes, at first, they'll be like, who was there live? Because, oh, here's a camera feed of, you know, here's a, a Instagram video or here's a Snapchat of who was kneeling and who was standing, right? Yeah. That'll only happen for a little bit. Then people for, will forget. People will not there. We're lazy, first of all. We're not going to pursue that for long. Sarah? Cut it. Cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that there is a, a workaround production-wise that the NFL could avoid seeing so who's running out onto the field? I found this inappropriate because... The, the kneeling or the, the new rule? The kneeling. Okay. So they know they're influential because they're... They're NFL players. They're they're very big named. They're gonna influence young minds, and they're gonna and young minds aren't gonna know the backstory to this. They're just gonna see them kneeling during the anthem. So they're gonna say, "Oh, well, they don't have to stand. Well, neither do I." I have a choice. Oh, there's a thing. Yeah. So I think why can't they just keep doing like a silent protest at least, and then go on to their own social media page or do an own conference? Because you know people will do it for them. And just do it that way. Don't involve it in the game. We go into work. We can talk to our coworkers about it if we're close with them, like about religion or about politics or anything like that. But At general, most jobs, you're not supposed to. Yeah, but a general rule, them, you're not supposed to bring that to work. So that's the exact same for them. Don't bring this to work. And they're getting paid fucking millions of dollars. Just play the goddamn game. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm paying you for. Right? So, like, so for um, Breast Cancer Month, they wear pink. So if they want to designate a color or something or a symbol for this, then do that. Just to help, because I didn't know it was about police brutality until Niskis told me about it. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I just don't care because I don't watch football. So if that's the case, then, you know, make a design and then wear it on your jersey, like how they wear pink for breast cancer. That's it. Oh, well, I, a little pin to protest. I well, I, well, I already know that something like that... Uh, would not get approved because the NFL is true sticklers when it comes to the uniform. Notice in college football, players, a lot of the players wear their socks low, mm-hmm. and you can see their exposed calf. When you get to the pros, you're not supposed to do that. Yep. If the referee see you, they're like, hey, son, pull up your socks. You know, and they actually, I heard a sound bite of a redskin. He, he, I don't know what he was doing, but like he pushed his socks down mm-hmm. for whatever reason, and the, the ref saw him, and he was like, hey, Pull up those socks. He was a rookie, and he goes, "You're not in college. You're a pro. Pull up those socks." And you know the jersey is always supposed to be tucked in. There are exceptions. He was know. Native American. What? No, he was a Washington Redskin. Ha <laughs> ha. The ref was doing his job. I know that the NFL is sticklers for stuff about the uniform. They might be able to do something customizable with their uh, cleats. But anything that involves the actual jersey and uniform probably isn't going to be altered in any way unless it's pink for breast cancer awareness you heard how i would fix it take away their platform you heard how sarah would fix it how would you fix it i would actually i have actually always questioned why is the military involved with pro sports because they put their lives on the line for for america and so you're disrespecting what i fought for just simple i don't see how that plays in the sports well i'm team america and you're saying thumbs down to america it's you know the military is um, they're paying the NFL for the ceremony to happen at every game. The national anthem or the flyover? Any any ceremony that involves the military, the military is buying the ad time from the NFL to do the thing on the field. Where we should be paying them. The NFL pays the them. The NFL is getting money from the military so they can do their ceremony on the field. Okay, so you're saying your solution would be the the military should 
be excluded out. Be, the if if the national anthem is causing this much of a stink, what if we just took it away half the season? Like it it holds no bearing on the actual game. It it doesn't. But then when when did this start? When did the national anthem start to be put uh, before any big sports? Event or anything like that. I think it started somewhere around like 2008 is when it actually There's started. There's no way. I mean, oh, well, yeah, they, before it. before it started getting aired on telecasts. Yeah, he it's always been a part of. It's always been a part of the game, but being aired during the time slot of you know for everyone to see mm-hmm. that started in like 2008, and that's when it just became. I thought you were a regular. Say, like, thing. That's when they started playing it. I was like Nick. No. No, they do it. You know, it used to be dark segments. Oh, you know? Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And in around a, year, a decade ago was when it started to just get aired on TV. This is not the way to fix it. This is just going to, when the season starts, what happens if one team has one player? All the coaches are out there and one player is on the field. There's no way you could avoid that. It, I mean, it's different if you have like five or six players in the back. There's like a 56-man squad. But like if all the starters, for the exception of one player, is out there standing for the national anthem, like... It's it's no different than when an entire team is kneeling and one player is standing. That that's what's going to end up happening. I don't know how. I don't know what is the happy middle ground for something like this. But personally, if the national anthem was not included in a football game, I don't see how it would affect the everything. It will affect the bottom dollar because the NFL is not getting money from it. But other than that, I don't see how it would change anything for the game. If they really want to follow through with that, then how about just keep the team in the locker room, they can do whatever they want in the locker room during the anthem, then all at once they come out from the tunnels and then they start the game. Once the anthem is done, everybody's clapping, the team come out. Yeah. If both teams just Because that just wastes so much time. Like you said, one player comes out, we have to wait for the rest of them to come out. It's just stupid. Now, it it has to be said that if there are players on the field that do kneel, it goes against the policy. The NFL will fine those respective teams. One team so far, the New York Jets, has said any player that kneels, we will pay the fine. You know, they will allow their team members to pro- to continue to protest because they feel to uh, protest the OG way. At, at the end of the day, they're not hurting anybody. They're they're just simply kneeling. If you're allowed to pray, and you kneel, I mean. This is essentially the same thing. You're kneeling and everything. Only you're you're protesting instead of praying. But that's not what it's about. I know. I know that is not what it's about. But it was never about insulting the flag or the military. Who? Who? What team said that that they would cover the fines? The New York Jets. The Jets. The New York Jets. How much is the fine? It's thirty dollars. They did not say. $30. Otherwise, I would. Otherwise, I would have said no. I'm pretty sure it'll be a couple of thousand. I mean, because they're pro. We're talking pro teams. Pro teams, and yeah. we're telling you not to, and you're still doing it. I'd make it like a million. Well, they're not going to charge the the player. They're going to charge the team. A, a million. And they're going to charge the team because the players are under the jurisdiction of the team. So if you allow a, a player to kneel, you're held responsible. We will fine you. The and Jets have you, gone on record in saying we will pay whatever fines. And then you, as the head coach or as the person in charge of the team, you are the boss. You are the, the manager. So you'd be like, you're fired or I'm going to write you up. And next, or I'm going to fine you. I'm just going to pass the fine right on to you. But the second time you're fined, it's not a thousand dollars. Now it's four thousand dollars. And the third time you're fined, it's a hundred thousand dollars. Yes, there's a big jump there. But <laughs> it's your third time. Yeah. Enough. I mean, I'm, it'll be really interesting to see what happens in the upcoming football season. But I'm going to be tuning in for football. Sarah, sorry about that. It's all right. Sarah, when he puts in, when he puts the first football game on. And he kneels. I want you to. Send, and he I, kneels. I, I, I want you to send a picture. I no, want I'm going to gonna punch him. <laughs> My goodness! Get your ass. <laughs> and I'd be like, I, she looks and she's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Why are you kneeling?" I'm like, "I'm reaching under the coffee table because there's a screw loose. Oh, I have to kneel to <laughs> still, still punch." And Boom. I'm just like down and out. She goes, "Inexcusable! No excuses." <laughs> now it has to be said, Colin Kaepernick had did not play a single down last season. Mm-hmm. It is a shame that someone that talented, who is a Super Bowl caliber player, did not have an opportunity with any club because of this. He didn't do anything wrong, and now that it has blown up out of proportion and everything, he what what is is he the martyr here? It, like, look at it this way: 
the Houston Texans are notorious for having backup quarterbacks that continually get knocked out of the game or out of the seasons because of injury. Why couldn't we have at least given Colin Kaepernick a try? He's a Super Bowl caliber player. How is he not on any club? I think it's very simple. I think the answer you're seeking is very simple. Give him a place to play. He could come play here in Houston. No. It wouldn't hurt anything. Yes, it would. You're having somebody on your team who comes with a lot of positive stuff and a lot of negative stuff. Look at it this way. If he continued to kneel, raises a big stink, would the city of Houston get over that if we went 12-4? and four? Depending on how much money he'd cost. Like it's, it's volatile. It's uncontrollable. Yeah. And I don't think that that's something any company wants to be associated with. Hmm? It's kind of like a derogatory mark on your credit. Yeah. You could be really, really good on your credit, but you'll have that one mark that you don't want to pay that medical bill and it haunts you for seven years. Goodness. That's what he's in right now. <laughs> that was his derogatory mark. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. I, I, it just blows my mind that someone's so talented. He turned a whole club around. The San Francisco 49ers were in the pisser, and in two years they went to the Super Bowl. Amazing. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to talk on? Um, I think there was, but we... I, I feel like we really... You're paranormal. Uh, oh, well, yeah. Actually, I did mention a little bit about the paranormal stuff at my house. So I prayed over my house, a quick update, prayed over my house and uh, used some oil to help bless the house. Yeah. And I will say, I think there was something. Because, not because I walked during the blessing or anything, something happened, but there literally has been no noises since then. But how does the energy feel? Peace. For the first time, for real, and so I'm thinking: Is this a mind thing, or is this is it really that much of a change? Now, if things start to happen again, or things whatever, then then it, then nothing happened, and it was just a coincidence. But as of right now, it's been a week and a half. Hopefully, it wasn't a coincidence then, or you know, or hopefully it's not temporary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I no, hope, man, it's gonna come back with a vengeance, bro. You're gonna get pantsed in the middle of the night. I, I, I did it while Madison was laying down. And you so, pantsed Madison? No, I was. Blessing. Well, that leads to something else, Miss Gets. But go ahead. I Goodness, was Manuel. Blessing the house while Madison was laying down, and I kept uh, thinking about it because I, I did it in Spanish, and so uh-huh. uh, I did think of of uh, looking up more more than what I know in Latin when you pray. Yeah. And uh, I I was kept thinking Madison, like going back to the room, and Madison saying, "Were you?" Speaking Latin, and I just thought that would be really funny if she was like, Goodness. Did I hear you speak Latin? Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you gotta go to the root. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna leave you guys with the theme song of a pro wrestler who is a former United States champion. Um, he is a former tag champion. He has been known as the innovator of offense. Who better than Chris Canyon? <laughs> who better than Canyon? <laughs> He had such a weird voice, but go ahead. He did. Uh, (laughs) If you guys have nothing else to touch on. Her name was Sarah. My name is Nick. Say goodbye, man. I'll catch you guys on the flippity flop.